Hi, my name is Jamie Nuti and I am a marine biologist working in Hong Kong. For this video, I wanted to give you some tips on how to become a marine biologist. So I get asked this question a lot and I do want to preface this video with there is not a single formula or one single way in which you can guarantee to get a job as a marine biologist. There are lots of lots of different routes that you can take to get into that dream position. I know people that have worked in completely different industries and then switched over to marine biology later in life. There are lots of different routes, but this video is aimed at someone, perhaps you're just coming out of high school, out of college, or heading to university, or thinking about what to take at university in order to become a marine biologist. So these are some practical tips based on my own experience of how to land that dream job. So firstly, in order to become a marine biologist, you need to study. So whether you're at college or heading to university, you do need to take some courses that will enable you to develop scientific or biological research skills. Now, this doesn't mean you have to study marine biology at university. I didn't. I studied zoological conservation and then environmental science before I started my PhD in marine biology and ecology. So you don't necessarily have to pick marine biology, but definitely a course which involves some aspect of the biological sciences will be necessary to develop the skills to enable you to become a marine biologist. Now, I do see a lot of people stressing about specifics of courses, whether they want to take a marine conservation course or a ocean biology course or wildlife conservation course. There are lots of different types of courses that you can take, which will overall give you the kind of skills which can be applied to marine biology. So don't get too hung up on the specifics of courses. If you are worried about or trying to choose between different courses, look specifically at the modules that are within that course. Try and choose something that is pretty broad to gain and enhance your skills in lots of different areas. I always find that beneficial because later down the line you don't know how your interests are going to change and develop. So choosing a course which is a little bit broader is something that I would always suggest. But yeah, absolutely, the first step would be to gain some education and qualifications in the biological sciences. So secondly is to volunteer. Now this will be particularly relevant to people which perhaps are coming straight out of high school and are trying to decide specifically what kind of area they want to work in. Now when I came out of high school, I knew that I wanted to work in wildlife conservation, but I didn't know specifically what I wanted to do. So I did a ton of different volunteering at different types of places so I could try to narrow down what it was that I really was interested in. So that's why I think it is important to do some volunteering early on so that you can get a bit of an idea about what sort of stuff you're interested in. Volunteering in a charity or an NGO Firstly, it will be really, really helpful to them. These are the kind of places that really, really always need volunteers. So you'll be doing a big help and directly contributing to ocean conservation as a volunteer. So you might, for example, volunteer at a ocean conservation NGO that does things like beach cleans, or you may volunteer for a charity that does a lot of things like public engagement. And you realize that you absolutely love that and you definitely want that to be a big part of your career. You could volunteer in a conservation organization that works directly hands-on with animals and you might realize again that that's something that you absolutely love and you really want to do. So volunteering is really really beneficial to try to narrow down the things that you are interested in and just importantly the things that you are really not interested in. So the third thing that I recommend is getting comfortable in the water. Now this isn't a necessity. I do know lots of marine biologists that don't do any field work. Everything that they do is based either in the lab or in aquariums. So it is not a necessity. But if you think that doing field work, so actually working out in the ocean, whether that's on boats or under the water, is something that you may be interested in. I really do recommend firstly just getting yourself comfortable with the ocean, getting comfortable with swimming and doing things like snorkeling. And then I think it would be really, really advantageous for you to get scuba diving qualifications. Now, again, not a, not a necessity, but if you do become a qualified scuba diver, it will open up a lot of different doors for you within the scientific research realm. So if doing field work is something you think you might be interested in, I do recommend working up to getting your scuba diving qualifications. So my next suggestion is to try and get a position volunteering in a research lab. Now, if you, for example, are straight out of your bachelor's or your master's, you could also apply for research assistant positions, which are paid positions within research labs as well. Now, this is a really, really great idea to get a chance to work on the front line, 
directly with scientists doing research and it is a great time for you to try different sorts of work to see what it is that you're interested in. For example, you may get a job as an RA, a research assistant, where you spend all your days sat in front of a microscope counting things and some people absolutely love that and some people absolutely hate it and perhaps during your studies you haven't had a chance to test that out, you haven't had a chance to see if that's something you actually like doing. So volunteering or working as an RA in a lab, you can get the chance to try these sorts of things and to see what it is that you really do want to do. It is a great time to learn lots of different practical skills which perhaps you weren't able to pick up during your studies and you will be working with, for example, PhD students and if a PhD is something that you are considering doing, you're gonna get a really good experience of what that could be like and that will help you make a decision as to whether that is something that you would like to do. Additionally, volunteering or working in a lab will enable you to make lots of different contacts and also work directly with a professor. Now that is really really beneficial because as soon as any positions come up in that lab, permanent positions or research positions, you're going to be one of the people that they call upon if you do a good job and make a good impression and you really love working in that lab. If a position comes up, naturally you would have a much higher chance of getting considered for that permanent position in a lab if you have volunteered in that lab before or worked as an RA in that group because that means that they all know you, that they know you're a really good worker, they know your standard of skills and your work ethic. So it is a really good opportunity for when permanent positions do come up in those groups. So the last tip that I wanted to suggest was to look up the CVs of people that are doing your dream job. So if your dream job is to work as a marine biologist, a scientist and a research group, go onto research group websites, look up the professors, the people who are leading these groups, look up the PhD students and other researchers and see what they did to get to their positions. Now, be careful with this because this is something I have been doing since I can remember, probably since high school. And it can get a little bit overwhelming because you will notice as soon as you start doing this that there are so many different paths to get into these positions. You may look up the path of 10 different marine biology professors and see that every single one of them has a completely different path to getting into their job. Now. I used to get super stressed out by this because I wanted it mapped out exactly for me, exactly how I can get my dream job so I know each step that I need to take. And when I would see this, when I would see that there's all these different routes in, it used to make me stress because then I wouldn't know what decisions to take and I wouldn't know if the decisions that I was taking were the exact right ones. But I think that could and should be looked at as a good thing and demonstrates there isn't one specific path that's gonna get you that marine biology job and that should ease your stress when you are making decisions. For example, if you're panicking about what course to take at university, recognize that there's not one course that's gonna get you that job. So do whichever one screams out to you which one you think you're going to love and that you're gonna get lots of experience from don't panic too much about forging the exact right path because there isn't an exact right path and I also think seeing that there are so many different ways of getting into your dream job is a good way to realize that there are no real bad decisions if you for example take up a volunteer position for a year with a ocean conservation group and that position made you realize that you really really don't want to do that type of work that's absolutely fine that's not a waste of time i used to panic about this so much i used to panic so much about making decisions and committing to things in case it was the wrong choice but i think if you take up a position take up a role and it makes you realize that you really hated that thing and you do not want to do that that's just as important as taking up a position and realizing oh my god i absolutely love this this is what i want to do for the rest of my life realizing something is not for you and just crossing it off the list is one of the things that you definitely don't want to do is very important and very valid so i think seeing that there are so many different pathways so many different routes in should be a good way to kind of ease your stresses a bit be constantly seeking out opportunities try different things but don't worry if something doesn't work out every effort that you make is taking you one step closer to that dream job that you're absolutely passionate about that you absolutely love and that is going to have a really big impact on the ocean and one thing that i did want to finish with was if you have started university and you are taking marine biology or another biological sciences type course and you realize I really don't like this or you kind of have the realization that oh marine biology kind of involves a lot of maths and I hate maths 
don't panic. There are tons of different ways in which you can still be involved and work in marine protection and ocean conservation that is aside from marine biology. Or if you've already started university and you have taken a course that is completely separate from marine biology or wildlife conservation whatsoever, but you have come to the realization that you are really passionate about marine protection and you want to take your career down that path, that's absolutely fine. There are so many different ways that all sorts of different fields can be applied to marine protection. You absolutely do not have to be a marine biologist or a scientist to work towards ocean protection. But I'm going to save that for another video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was useful. Please do feel free to ask me any more questions that you may have in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Bye and good luck.